We bring you the journey of officers, airmen and women entrusted with the task of defending Kenya's airspace in wartime and maintenance of Kenya's airspace sovereignty at all times for the last 50 years. We bring you the evolution of what started as the Royal Air Force, Kenya Flight, with only five officers and two chipmunks to what we are today. A robust service with fighter jets, cargo and troop transport, helicopter, a VIP squadron, all operated by several thousand personnel. Join us as we share our history in offering offensive and defensive air operations. A Golden Jubilee is a, a major milestone in the life of any institution. And as the Kenya Air Force celebrates its 50th anniversary of existence, I would like to take this early opportunity to congratulate the commander of the Kenya Air Force, the officers, and the service members of the Kenya Air Force for their resilience, discipline, and hard work over the period in building the professional air force that we are proud of today. The Kenya Air Force has a long history that dates back to 1st August 1940, when Eastleigh Airfield was opened for full operations during the Second World War by the East African Royal Air Force. The first operational flying squadron provided troop movement to combat areas and repatriation of combat fatigued personnel. At the end of the Second World War, Isli was used as a center in conducting surveys in order to update maps and topographical charts. A flight of Baltimore, the Mosquitoes and the Lancaster aircrafts were used for aerial photo reconnaissance. The East African Royal Air Force also became a major combat and air logistics base for the British who controlled the three East African countries. After the war, East African Royal Air Force Isli doubled up as an important transit airfield for both military and civilian commercial flights. The end of the war had stimulated African nationalism. The ex-servicemen sought to maintain their status in the King's African Rifles. This will plant the seeds that led to unrest in the late 1940s when severe riots began breaking out in East Africa, with the inhabitants agitating for self-rule. The unrest will gradually culminate in the arrest of Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, the president of Kenya African Union in 1952. It was that from the East African Royal Air Force that he was flown in the Nansen transport aircraft to Lokitang in the Northern Frontier District where he was imprisoned in 1952. Kenyans will further press on demanding for his release and declaration of independence. These movements, full of corruption and virulent anti-white propaganda, had eventually to be outlawed by the government. At the same period, the colonial master noted that there was intense pressure fueling hostile undercurrents in Kenya. Schools, breeding places of hatred and revolt, were closed by government order. But the reign of intimidation on all... The colonial rule came to an end in 1963 when independence was agreed with the British. On 12 December 1963, Kenya attained independence. Uhuru! I, Jomo Kenyatta, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this 
it's one of the happiest days of my life. Following our independence, at the request of the new government of Kenya, Britain seconded Group Captain S. Stockwell to be Kenya's first Air Force commander. He arrived in Kenya on 19th May 1964 with the task of supervising the rapid growth and the Africanization of the Young Air Force. Captain Stockwell was accompanied by other Royal Air Force officers and ground crew who worked to assist in the early formation and training. These included flying instructors, maintenance engineers and technical crews. On 1st of June 1964, the Armed Forces Cup 199 Laws of Kenya paved way for the formation and inauguration of the Kenya Air Force. So far, 12 commanders have headed the Air Force as follows. Captain Stockwell, seconded by the British Royal Air Force, served between 1st of June 1964 to 22nd February 1967. Group Captain F. Rothwell served between 22nd February 1967 to 9th August 1971. Group Captain J. Edwards served between 10th August 1971 to 16th April 1973. Colonel D. Ngeshoro served between 17th April 1973 to 29th November 1978. Brigadier D. Ngeshoro served between 30th November 1978 to 26th June 1980. Major General P. N. Karaoke served between 27th June 1980 to 11th August 1982. Major General H. M. Muhammad served between 12th August 1982 to 14th September 1982. Lieutenant General H. M. Muhammad served between 15th September 1982 to 13th March 1986. Major General D. N. Geshoro served between 27th February 1986 to 9th May 1989. Major General D. K. Washira served between 10th May 1989 to 28th June 1994. Major General N. Leshan served between 29th June 1994 to 30th November 2000. Major General S.K. Mutai served between 1st December 2000 to 26th November 2003. Major General J.W. Karangi served between 27th November 2003 to 9th August 2005. Major General H.M. Tangai served between 10th August 2005 to 12th July 2011. Major General J. Otieno served between 13th July 2011 to date. I, Mwai Kibaki, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Kenya, declare that the Constitution set out in a schedule shall be the new constitution of Kenya with effect from the 27th... The primary role of the Kenya Air Force has been to defend the Kenyan airspace during wartime and maintenance of sovereignty of that airspace at all times. The act also confers on the Kenya Air Force two secondary missions in support to land and maritime forces in pursuance of national objectives and to aid civil authorities during periods of national calamities, national undertakings, and any other activity that may be specified. The primary role has seen the Air Force train and gradually retain a mission-capable force to provide close air support to the Kenya Army ground troops, Kenya Navy in maritime patrol or surveillance role air interdiction, heliborne operations, and tactical transportation. All of us in the Kenya Air Force cannot but marvel at the evolution of what started as the Royal Air Force Kenyan flight with five officers and two chipmunks 
in one station at Isli, Nairobi, to what we are today, a robust service with fighter jets, cargo and troop transporters, helicopters, a VIP squadron, all operated by several thousand personnel. To cater for increased requirement for indigenous pilots, a flying training modern unit was established at Isili with a planned output of 10 pilots per annum. The unit was equipped with six chipmunk and three beaver aircraft for training purposes. In tandem with flying training unit for crew, a ground training unit was established to train technical manpower for expanding the Kenya Air Force. 80 technicians were produced annually. The expansion and modernization picked up in the 1965-1966 when squadrons were created following the acquisition of eight beavers and four caribou aircraft. In the last 50 years, Kenya Air Force has focused in continuous training in order to remain competitive in the region and to remain supreme in air defense. Training is the most vital part of our capacity development and it is what will make us fight even better. This is what enables each one of us to acquire and master skills of our professions so that we can perform our functions effectively and efficiently also. Major undertaking for anybody in the military should be training. And uh, we always say that you fight the way you train. So if you train hard, you'll fight easy. Training capability has led to an expansion in courses offered. Training at the Kenya Air Force is crucial. As such, we have been keen to gradually improve our training scope in addition to establishing reputable institutions. At the moment, Kenya Air Force has at least eight schools who run programs annually. We conduct basic flying training at flying training school, after which the pilots are posted to various squadrons such as fast jet, heavy lift, and helicopter squadrons. The flying training school was established in 1964 with the sole purpose of training pilots for the Kenya Air Force, uh, the Kenya Police, and other pilots within the region. So far, we have trained 700 pilots so far, and about 29 instructors. Our students come to this school. They first go through a thorough ground school for about three months, and then they will start flying on the Bulldog aircraft. From Bulldog, they will later go into the Tucano, and from there, we'll stream them to various aircraft the fighter and transport. We also have aircraft technicians who are trained at Defense Technical College, formerly Kenya Armed Forces Technical College in Embakasi. The first Forces Technical College was established in 1964 as a dry ground training school which was based in Kenya Air Force Isili, now Boya Base. The mission of the ground training school then was to train both technical and non-technical tradesmen for the Kenya Air Force. For the last 50 years, the college has been able to produce enough technicians who have been able to maintain, service and sustain our equipment within the KDF. The people charged with radar control and anti-aircraft guns are trained at the Air Defense School. Over the last 50 years, we have evolved from a small unit uh, with few and uh, old equipment, but over the ages we have been able to modernize and now we are positioned to 
face current and future challenges in matters of air defense. We achieve this using high technology equipment manned and maintained by highly skilled manpower trained both locally and abroad. Airfield Police School ensures that we have men and women securing our airfields and key installations. The personnel at our logistics branch ensure that we have efficient supply of troops, equipment, textile and other support equipment. Modernization in training and increased student intake and education scope has influenced the growth of infrastructural and asset base of the Air Force. Kenya Air Force logistics has grown with the time. We started as a squadron and now we are in directorate. We inherited uh, the infrastructure that was left behind by the Royal Air Force, the equipment, and over time, over the 50 years, we have been able to improve from uh, one base, that is the, the Royal ECB, to the KPM base, and the bases which are in Mombasa, Wajia, and Manda. Over time, due to modernization, we have modernized to be in tandem or in line with the rest of the world, and we have brought in new uh, aircraft into our inventory. Like Air Base was established in 1971. This is the main fighter base of the Air Force, and its role primary role is the defense of the airspace of the Republic of Kenya and support to our sister services in all operational missions. The base uh, started off with the strike masters as the first fighters and in 1974 got additional squadron of the hunters. Then in 1978 we got an additional squadron of the F-5s and in 1980 we got a squadron of the Hawks. In the last five years when um, there have been notable changes in our security architecture, the base initially was involved in support of the Kenyan Navy in the anti-piracy campaign in the Indian Ocean. In 2011, the decision was made to pursue Al-Shabaab in Somali. We will defend our territorial integrity through all measures necessary to ensure peace and stability. The fighter capability of the Kenya Air Force was put to test during Operation Linda Inchi. Well, once um, the operation uh, was actually uh, launched, uh, the Air Force degraded Al Shabaab capabilities in the cities of Alfmado, uh, Bibi, Habole, Janakdala, and uh, this actually enabled our land forces to actually capture these cities with the absolutely no casualties on our side. Uh, when we came to Kismayo, we did actually have um, a lot of uh, targets that were assigned to the Kenya Air Force, and these targets were actually first degraded before we even thought of sending in our troops. As an essential part of the Kenya Defense Forces, the Kenya Air Force has always demonstrated outstanding commitment to the defense and security of Kenya and the people of this country. The involvement of the Kenya Air Force in the provision of close air support 
and corporate support air services to both our uh, uh, ground forces and also our maritime forces in the ongoing operations in Somalia have continued to provide synergy and which synergy has enabled the gains that KDF has made and continues to make as we engage our Shabab in Somalia. The exploits of Air Force pilots, particularly in close air support in the recent phase of operations Red Anchi, have been, to say the least, legendary. Lab fighter pilots were instrumental to destroy enemy dispositions. I call upon the Kenya Defense Forces to raise the standard of their professionalism and intensify their role as a national example. I make this call because we must totally neutralize all threats. Supplying a good example should be the easiest and most joyful assignment for the KDA. The secondary role is aid to civil authority, where the Air Force has in the five decades been crucial as a first-line emergency responder. Moya Base as a transport base has had uh, the honor of serving this country in terms of uh, lift, uh, lift capability. We've also been able to participate in uh, what is called aid to civil authority. I'll give the examples. For example, when we have calamities such as uh, the El Nino, we were able to airlift uh, food, drugs, examination materials to various areas in this country. We've also been able to lift our troops, for example, when Namibia was getting its independence and we had uh, peacekeeping troops uh, stationed there. We used to do resupply uh, with the Buffalo aircraft, I remember those days. And uh, we've been able to range within East Africa and beyond using our transport aircrafts in terms of helping uh, the government and our own troops. We had uh, the problems in South Sudan, and the Kenya Air Force undertook one of the biggest airlifts that this nation has undertaken since independence. We were able to lift uh, uh, Kenyans from various parts of South Sudan to Juba, and on from Juba to Nairobi, using our various aircrafts in the Air Force inventory. The transport base has been instrumental in transporting and providing armed escort to Kenya's four heads of state. We in the VIP squadron carry out the task of uh, carrying the head of state in, inside the country and outside the country. We also carry out uh, other VIPs as required or as uh, tasked and also other passengers plus uh, troops. Training job execution at the Air Force is not for the faint-hearted. It takes courage, discipline, and selfless attitude. We believe in continuous training to acquire professionalism. The women at the Air Force have also been enrolled at the Flying Training School. Someone told me that I can join the military and I can be a pilot. That 
thing was united within me. Wow, I really did want to be a pilot. Yeah, but you know, when you think of the realities of life, especially for a girl from a village like me, and then you, I used to research how much would it cost for you to be a pilot. You think it's, it's unreachable. Yeah, but I want to encourage those people who believe that probably flying is only for the rich. That there are other places like the military where you will be able to achieve your life's dreams. Today, Major Nora Koech is an instrumental contributor to national duty at the Moy Air Base Air Transport. Her performance has seen the admission of more women in the flying training school. I am a female of the initial pilot currently undergoing ground training in the Kenya Air Force Training School. I aspire to serve this nation as a fighter pilot. Ground training is quite challenging, but if you have the determination, if you have the focus, if you have the discipline, then you will sail through. Today there are three women in various levels training to become seasoned Air Force pilots and many others skilled in aircraft maintenance as technicians. personnel to have proper health care in order to accomplish their respective duties. The medical service have also registered tremendous growth over the last 50 years. The medical services in the Kenya Air Force uh, date back to the 1940s uh, when this the ICLE Air Base was built. It was basically meant to offer services to the injured soldiers and the personnel who are based here. So it had very limited capacity in terms of personnel and equipment. I've seen a tremendous increase in both the capacity of the human beings manning the base medical centers in Moya Base and the Kipia Air Base in terms of training, equipment and infrastructure. What uh, we used to do 10 years ago, uh, we are able to do that maybe almost 10 times now and we are able to benchmark with uh, the best uh, medical centers. We have a fully-fledged maternity unit with a resident uh, gynecologist. We also have the Armed Forces um, Eye Clinic being based at the Moya base because we have a resident of the homologist who happens to be me. We also have the future clinic of the Defence Forces based at the Moya base. And the Moya base is also the Defence Forces Immunization Centre for Foreign Travellers. And uh, we are able now to carry out investigations in the laboratory to a level where we refer very few to the referral hospital in Defence Forces Memorial Hospital. We used to only admit about four patients about 10 years ago, but today we have a hospital fully fledged with about 40 bed capacity, able to accommodate both pediatric, female and male patients. We have a branch which is very important to us called the Aviation Medicine Branch, which takes care of the mental and physical health of our crew. As you know, aircrafts are operated by uh, human beings, and to enhance aviation safety, the man-machine must be taken care of so that we enhance that by looking at the mental and the physical aspects of the aviation-sensitive uh, personnel. So we have a robust um, uh, base aviation uh, medical center here, which has improved over time. Now we are able to carry out all the investigations we require to be sure that our crew operate our aircraft and the technicians at their best of uh, health. Social responsibility is also a core principle at the Kenya Air Force. The officers also pay a visit to the Laikipia Children's Home every year. This year, the medical department conducted a medical campaign. The Moy Air Base and Laikipia Primary Schools admit military personnel children.
many wars are fought over scarce land resources. And in line with this, the Kenya Air Force has fully embraced the environmental soldier program. In distinguished service to the nation, the airmen and women have over the years trained world-class champions in various sporting fields. Notable names like five times world cross-country champion, Captain Paul Tergat, Olympic bronze champion, Corporal Helen Obiri, and gold medalist, Sergeant Nancy Lagarde. In 2002, Kenya Air Force adopted yet another recreational sport. Kenya Air Force Golf Club started in 2001. At that time, the Kenya Defense Forces had uh, a lot of sports, but golf was one of the missing sports. We have had people improve at various levels. Currently, there is one service member who has turned professional. We started off with browns, but currently we've changed and now we are playing in greens. On June the 4th, 2014, the Kenya Air Force celebrated its 50th anniversary with lots of pomp and glamour that befits such an occasion. His Excellency, the President of Kenya and the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, and the First Lady, Margaret Kenyatta, were some of the guests that graced the occasion. Many more dignitaries, former and serving commanders, were in attendance. The Air Force has transformed to an expeditionary, network-enabled, capability-based and resource-focused aerospace force that effectively contributes to the security of the Kenyan airspace. But what is the future? of the Kenyan Air Force in the changing global security environment. The Kenya Air Force was officially launched on the 1st of June 1964 at a parade outside the office of the President Arambi House in the presence of His Excellency President Jose Jomo Kenyatta. The people who mounted the uh, parade at the time were the the newly recruited uh, administrative officers, while the five of us staged the first ever flyby by the Kenyan trained uh, pilots. I made long lasting friendship with several people within and outside the armed forces, and also outside Kenya. I can say I had a great and fulfilling life serving during my service in the armed forces and don't have one moment to regret. Given a chance, I can do it all over again. <laughs> we are gathered here today to recognize and appreciate the lives and work of the exceptional men and women who have comprised the Kenya Air Force over the past 50 years. We salute the depth of their commitment, the quality of their service, and their devotion to our country. We acknowledge their triumphs as well as their struggles, their joys as well as their travails. We pay tribute to their courage, to their professionalism, to their tenacity of spirit, their willingness to strive, to stretch the boundaries of, of aviation throughout this region, to innovate, to recreate, to succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kenyan Air Force can look back to its history with pride, but we cannot spend too much time celebrating as we need to reflect on our way forward. 
The history of the service has been one of continuous improvement, taking advantage of the latest methods, equipment, and skills to keep the country safe. That tradition will be maintained. We all know of the modernization program that the Kenyan Air Force and the wider Kenya Defense Forces have been involved in. My government remains committed to that modernization, and I freely accept it, the duty of protecting the sovereignty and integrity of the Republic, and my government will do everything in its power to fulfill that obligation. It has been 50 years of providing air defense to Kenyans. 50 years of training, discipline, deterrence, surveillance, and battles well fought and won. On this auspicious occasion of the Kenya Air Force Golden Jubilee Anniversary, I take this opportunity to pay tribute to officers, airmen, and women who have served in the past and those who are still in service. To remember our pioneers, especially the brave who have died in the line of service, is to reaffirm our motivation to serve our nation, which is today engaged in operations to defend our people from those who wish them harm. Those who long ago coined his Kiswahili motto, Tuko Imara Angani, translating, we are study in the air, have reason to smile in satisfaction. As an airman myself, I take pride in being part of this great service, and I thank and commend all those who have served in the last 50 years of the Air Force life for their dedication and commitment, which has ensured that the Air Force has remained true to its mission in ensuring that Kenya's airspace is at all times secure.